and i don't know why i feel like i'm about to start crying right now but yeah uh hold on wait <laughs> Hey girls, welcome, welcome back to my channel. So I'm so excited to be filming this updated makeup routine for y'all because we haven't did one of these since I don't know how long and it's been highly, highly requested because the makeup has changed tremendously. So I will have everything linked below. All of my makeup products can actually be found on my Amazon storefront in the description box. Yeah, I'll also be answering a bit of questions from the faith-based Q&A that I told y'all to leave me some questions about child a long time ago on instagram so uh, sorry for the wait <laughs> i'm really excited to be hopping into these questions it is going to be filmed in two parts though because i did not end up finishing the questions but i have to run off to church really quick and then i'm going to finish up the questions when i get back i hope that y'all enjoyed this video so let's just go ahead and hop into it okay so i'm gonna start out with my brows i can't remember if this was part of my routine um last time we did one of these but i do go in with the anastasia brow freeze to do my brows first it kind of gives that laminated look which is what i like especially now that i've plucked one of my eyebrows to the point where it's like super thin and the other one is a decent size i like doing this because it kind of just makes it look back thick and not so thin yeah this is the one if y'all can't tell it's too thin i hate it <laughs> and sometimes i sculpt them or highlight up under and sometimes i don't it really just depends on how i'm feeling since i'm going to church today i don't think i'm going to highlight up under them just because really i only highlight up under them when it's like you know i really really want to go all out i guess you would say let me go ahead and pull up the questions because it's like it takes a little second for them to really really get tacky and actually stay in place so let me pull up the questions because i know it's going to be far back because that was like in april i believe when i told y'all to ask me questions y'all this is this is really i'm sorry so as y'all can see here we have a good bit of questions so we're going to go ahead and just hop into these are you a christian i just feel like that's a good starter question yes i am a christian I was about to go deeper into that, but we won't. <laughs> we won't go there. Let me get to a place where we can talk. Okay, so I'm gonna go in with my Maybelline Master Prime Primer. I just started using this, y'all. I usually use the Smashbox Total Finish, but I seen on TikTok that this is a good dupe for it. I don't have any more of my Smashbox, so uh, that's what we're using right now. It gets the job done. I'm gonna underpaint because that's what I've been loving lately. And I was using the Elf Cosmetics Elf Camo Hydrating Concealer. Honestly, y'all, this color right here, for it to be a contour shade, I feel like it just looks like my shade. If I put this side by side by my foundation, well, I guess it's a little darker. That's my foundation. So I'm gonna go in with my contour first. So that is the elf hydrating camo concealer in the shade rich chocolate i really want to find some new colors though if i'm being honest with y'all because i just don't feel like that's dark enough it's not even as dark as my natural contour in my face <laughs> i just realized that next question how'd you find the right church home so i actually have been eyeing the church that i go to now for a while because i felt like it was the closest to um transformation church which is who i had been watching since 2020 online but i didn't have an actual church home physical church home but once i came across the church that i go to now online and his sermons you know i was like oh wow but i didn't end up going to go try him out until when was it actually it was at the beginning of this year as y'all see in january but i had been watching his sermons um and wanting to go and try him out for a while or try the church out or whatever for a while before i actually did how did i find it honestly i think i just seen his sermons on youtube i guess i would just say i found him like online what started your walk with god at the end of last year i literally still have a tiktok so i'll probably insert it at the end of last year and really just for a while i had been saying to myself i really want to get serious about my relationship with god and i went through a lot last year 
I'll say that's what got me to just really buckle down and be like, no, I really, really need you right now. And the only thing that I could really lean on or go to at that po at the point was him. So without going too much in detail of those things, life was lifing, okay? Life was lifing. It came a point where I couldn't turn to nobody but him and honestly I feel like that was his purpose in all that and that's why he allowed a lot of the things that happened last year to happen. <laughs> like my pastor has a song, it literally says, there was purpose in my pain. I honestly feel like there was purpose in all of that because if everything didn't happen the way it happened, I would have never been like, okay, at this point, I don't have nobody else. I don't have nothing to turn to but my father at this point. So I know that there was purpose and I know that that's why he allowed me to go through everything that I went through. So yeah, that's what started my walk with God. Life was life in. When you started reading the Bible, where did you start? I actually started in Genesis. Y'all don't read like how I thought I was about to read. <laughs> that didn't last that long though. So I mean, you know, it's cool. But child, I started in Genesis thinking that I'm finna just, you know, read from Genesis to the end of the Bible. No, ma'am. What I do now, which I think is another question, it's like, you know, how do you read the Bible? How do you do your Bible study? Basically, I just invite the Holy Spirit in before I read. I just pray and then, you know, I ask him to lead me and guide me as I go into my reading time. Some people, you know, he'll say something or bring the scriptures to mind for them. But me personally, I just let them guide my hands and wherever I flip to, that's where he need me to be. And like 98% of the time, I be exactly where I need to be. So that's how I do it now. I just pray, ask him to guide me before I open my Bible. And when I open my Bible and, you know, invite the Holy Spirit in as well so that I can understand what I'm reading. Cause I think that was another question. How do you decide what type of fast to do? So I have been wanting to do, wanting to do the Daniel fast for a while. I'm going in with my Too Faced Born This Way concealer in the shade. Try to go over it. I have been wanting to do the Daniel fast for a while. On top of, I had some friends that were doing it with me as well. And then when I started going to my church, they were also doing the fast. So that's how I chose that. And then other times when I fast, I don't know, I just like see it in the Bible and then pray about it <laughs> and make sure that, you know, it's what he wants me to do. Cause for example, one time I felt led to do a three day water fast. And then like the day of, I believe I like got this feeling felt like I hurt five days and I was like mm, hold on <laughs> five days <laughs> I was already about to go to glory the third day uh, the time I had did the three-day water fast before five so I prayed about it and I ended up opening up my Bible and stuff and basically he confirmed the three days so yeah that's that God speaks to people in different ways. What ways do you find him speaking to you most often? Often. He definitely speaks to me most often through the word because I do read every morning and night. You know, I get a lot of revelations when I'm reading and also through signs. You know, like if I'm just going about my day or whatever, I'll definitely catch signs. So I'll say through his word and signs. What does it mean to base your faith off of your feelings? Um, I don't know what that means, but it doesn't sound good because your feelings are like temporary and they can fluctuate. Your faith is supposed to be strong. It's not supposed to waver. So that's what that sounds like it means is that, you know, your faith is one minute you're here, one minute you're there, one minute you believe and one minute you not. One minute you have faith, one minute you don't have faith. That's what that sounds like. So I wouldn't recommend you being that way <laughs> if that's the case how do you overcome temptation of sin you actually want to do girl flee from it flee from it girl flee from it i'm telling you from experience flee from it just go as far away as you can run from it girl run because don't test god and i can be open and transparent with y'all you know about this because i've experience this i've went through this or whatever and i've learned the hard way don't test yourself don't put yourself to the test let alone god don't just don't don't even don't see don't try to get you know closest to it as you can 
and then believe that you're gonna stop or you're not gonna end up doing this whatever it is just flee from it like the bible says okay because that temptation hit hard because the devil that's what the devil want okay the devil wants you to fail he wants you to mess up he wants you to sin he wants you to fall into temptation so he gonna be real hard on you just like he was on jesus in the wilderness but jesus had to tell him hey <laughs> hey this ain't that who is god to you personally that is a wonderful question god to me is definitely my everything <laughs> honestly literally my everything my father advocate my helper my savior protector provider he's everything to me i've seen him bring me out of things that i didn't think that i would <sighs> make it out of okay i've seen that man work wonders okay so I'm going in with this translucent setting powder from Dollhouse Cosmetics. This is just to set and then we're going to go back in to bake. That was a translucent. This is more yellow. So to bake, I'm going to go in with my Morphe Banana Rich Baking Setting Powder. And usually I do this with powder. Uh, but I'm gonna do it with my brush today because I seen somebody doing it with uh, their brush on TikTok. And her makeup be looking bomb, so. What differences have you seen since your walk with God? Definitely, I have more discipline with myself. Like, I, and it's so crazy because I was just reading about this in Leviticus. I think that was in Leviticus this morning when I was reading and it was basically talking about how like you can't, overcome being of the world on your own but once you invite the holy spirit in he's able to help you and be your advocate up against that and that's definitely what i have i've noticed now is that help because y'all it's literally been so crazy because as of lately i've all of a sudden been wanting to you know like go out more i've all of a sudden had this urge to like go to the club and stuff and i was never really a club goer that's just not really my thing and recently i've been wanting to go to the club that's never been my thing then uh, eyeshadow for my blush out of the morphe 3503 fierce by nature palette i don't know the name of the color but it's just the orange shade on the second row that i'm going in with so yeah like girl what this has never been my thing like why do i even have the urge to go so that's definitely what i've noticed and also looking at things through a different lens like i don't really get mad if i do find myself getting mad at certain things i definitely look at them from a different lens now i have way more patience with things and i just try to look at things with more grace and a different heart posture and also with forgiveness and you know people and their ways i definitely have noticed a difference in me and how i look at situations that maybe don't work out like how i may want it to work out or people doing things that i'm not too fond of i always just like think about how at the end of the day we do things that god isn't too fond of so it's like who am i to really really sit up here and be super mad i've definitely seen a difference with my quickness to forgive because like the bible says i've really started living like this who are we to not forgive people when god forgives us you know that's what really helped me and that will really help you heal real fast because you gotta remember at the end of the day that's god's child too we all be making god mad. that's god's child first so who are we to even much feel entitled to somebody being like perfect to us when us ourselves haven't even did everything correct in god's eyes so those are the diff differences i've seen i feel like get past stuff because it's like with with god i can get through anything and at the end of the day i look at stuff it's like it happens for a reason there's purpose in everything that's what i feel like so how do you discipline yourself to stay away from worldly things with our generation being so of it that's literally so crazy that's the question that i have like right after what i was just talking about i don't feel like it's even me 
Because if I wasn't where I was in my walk, I feel like I would have easily been just been like, okay, well, I'm just go. I don't want to just sit up here and say I'm not ever going to end up going or doing something. But it's definitely been taking me a while. If I didn't have the Holy Spirit and wanted to be obedient to him, I feel like I would have been. So I'm telling you, you really have to welcome the Holy Spirit. You got to pray that Pray, baby. Prayer is your weapon. You got to pray because I be having to pray. That's what you got to do because God be working, but the enemy work just as hard. But God don't always come out on top. I, think that, so. I just sat with Charlotte Tearberry setting spray. And then we're going to go back in with uh, the powder puff. No more powder. I'm just going to like set everything in place. I wish I had one of those, one of those fans off of Amazon, the little Chinese fans, because I think that's what they're called. Ooh. Please, please don't take that the wrong way. I think that's what they're called. They're just so fancy to me. I want one of those for when I'm doing my makeup. It just gives it girl. Also y'all, fasting definitely helps you. It's like a jump start. Cause once you get into a regular schedule or if you do like a long fast, especially a water fast for three days, if you, you know, denied your flesh in that way for a certain period of time, at that point it helps you to deny other things, you know, worldly things. Because it's like, I can literally deny myself food. I can go without food or I can go without this for a certain period of time. It's like you build up I don't know the word for it, but it's just like once you do that, it, it kind of makes it a little bit easier to do other things. What drew you to choose the church you attend? Y'all, when I tell you, when I went there the first time, that worship, worship is what got me. And it's so crazy, the day that I went to church was actually the day that the Holy Spirit ended up just taking over the whole service. He didn't even end up preaching at the service that I went to. He let the Holy Spirit take over. Like worship was just so good. And I don't know why I feel like I'm about to start crying right now. But yeah, uh, <laughs> hold on, wait. <laughs> yeah, worship was really good. And the people that we have on our worship team and our choir, I I'm sorry, I don't mean to sound, I'm not trying to, you know, host or anything like that but our worship team is just different i'm sorry it just hit different and then i mean the word is even better the leaders and the pastors that we have all of them just hit when i first went as soon as i got out the car and i was walking in the greeters everybody greeting me everything it just felt like home i had never gotten a feeling like that it was kind of one of those feelings the closest thing that i feel like i can uh, compare it to even though i haven't experienced the situation but it's like when people get married and you know how they ask like how did you know that person was the one and they'll be like when you know you know and it just it just feels like it that's definitely what happened to me when i went to my church so on camera i look so white and flushed out but right here i'm so warm i got a lot of questions about like what made you take your spiritual journey more serious and what got you to take god more serious and stuff like that and I didn't see y'all, it just goes back to, you know, my answer in the beginning, life was life and, and I literally just really did not want to be a lukewarm Christian anymore. That was another big thing. I forgot to mention that. I just really, really did not want to, like before, even, you know, with life, life and or not, I really just did not want to be lukewarm anymore. I wanted to truly dedicate my life and be living set apart and holy, like he calls us to be. Were you nervous to present your new self to the world, especially being an influencer? Absolutely not, because at the end of the day, babes, at the end of the day, without him, this platform wouldn't be what it is. Without him, I wouldn't be who I am. So why? Why would I be, what, nervous? No, never. I feel like that's like, um, who was that in the Bible? Peter? What's up, Peter? or Judas. Yeah, I definitely was not nervous at all. I don't even look at it as like a new self either, but okay. When did you get saved? So I got saved back in fifth grade. What's your spiritual gift? Um, I have the gift of, da, 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 da. I don't really know. I don't know why I feel like I don't be wanting to share that. One day I will though. I just don't feel like to share it right now. 
Have you had any setbacks? Yes, ma'am, I have. Unfortunately. Highlighting with my Makeup Revolution highlighter up under my eyebrow right here. And I'm gonna go in with my finger because when I do it with the brush, it just needs too wide on my nose. And for a lippy, I'm going in with Makeup Revolution Pout Balm. It's literally so out. Um, it's their plumping lip gloss in clear. And then I'm going in with Elf's plumping glosses in both Pink Cosmo and Mocha Swiss. Then I'm gonna just put this on top. There's literally nothing in here. Barely. Sometimes I go in with this Maybelline blush. And then as far as the questions, I guess we'll just go ahead and just get into the rest of the questions. Now we can kind of, you know, focus where we need to be focused with the questions. Cause I just feel like we was probably all over the place while I was trying to do this and answer the questions at the same time, but I need to put on my mascara. We're gonna go ahead, hop back into the questions. Obviously, I'm back from church. I just like touched up my makeup just a tad bit and just reapplied my lip liner and powdered a bit. But honestly, the face is really holding up after that church service, okay? Cause it was one for the books. We're gonna just go ahead and hop right on back into these questions. And obviously, we have Bryce in the background here too joining us. Do you wanna help us answer questions? And sit down. Good job. Tips to stop being a lazy bones. Girl, this question is really good. And also, I'm gonna give you like what I try to remember or remind myself when I feel like, you know, I'm being a lazy bones. But this is something that I feel like I struggle with. Honestly, I'm not gonna say that I struggle with being lazy. It's just more so procrastination. I feel like, cause I'm gonna get it done. But I wish I was more on it. Get it done before it's due. Do stuff before, you know, like before it's time. Just always be in a routine of doing something. You, if you get what I'm saying. So I don't think that's lazy, but still, it's just, I, I wanna work on that. But what I remember or remind myself is it actually talks about this in the Bible. I don't remember the exact scripture, but I believe it's in Proverbs. I would grab my Bible. Yeah, I'm gonna grab my Bible real quick. <laughs> uh, oh, and I flipped right to Proverbs. That is crazy. That is crazy. Is it on this page? Because if he stood up here and led me straight to the page, now that would be wild. Okay, no, it's not on this page. And I feel like it's gonna take me forever to actually find the scripture, but I do know that it is in Proverbs. So let me just look up what the Bible says about being lazy. It's Proverbs 13, 4. Okay, I knew it was in Proverbs. I was right. Oh, my 13, 4, this may be, it's probably just a different version. I have the NIV version. I'm not sure. This doesn't tell me what version of the description is, scripture is coming from. Sit. But it says, the soul of the lazy man desires and has nothing, but the soul of the diligent shall be made rich. And then he gives an explanation saying, the lazy man desires what hardworking people want house, food, vacations, money for college and retirement, but the lazy man's desires remain unsatisfied while the diligent gain wealth. Basically seeing the diligent in their work, you know, they gain these things, but the lazy man, you know, he's sitting up there wanting it, or the lazy person is sitting up there wanting it, but you're not putting in the work for it, basically. So yeah, that's what I try to remind myself. Seeing you grow is so inspiring and motivating. What made you want to start this journey? So I kind of have answered that any Christian podcast that you like to listen to. So I don't know why, like when I filmed this the first time I had them all, I like to listen to Dear Future Wifey podcast. I like to listen to, I'm not sure if you would consider yourself like a Christian podcast though, but I know that with all the guests that he brings on there, like they all have a purpose. And honestly, all the stories, I feel like you can learn something from. Even if you've never been through the particular situation that whoever the guests are, story is, you can still learn things from the situations and every guest that he brings on his show and every person that he brought on that show be believers of Christ and 
most of the times they do kind of hit on how God has restored their relationship or they always revert back, have something to say about whatever God did in their life regarding their situation. So still has like Christian principles where they speak of Christian things or biblical things in God. So Dear Future YP podcast, Sarah Jakes Roberts podcast. I'll listen to Caleb Gordon's podcast sometimes. I think I've only listened like once, but I like the fact that, you know, it's young men um, sitting up there talking about God. Like, that is beautiful. I believe there's a couple others. If I'm not naming them, I'll list them on the screen here for y'all. What are some challenges that you have had to face beginning this journey? Once you start living for Christ, y'all, it's not as easy as you think because things start being more clear to you. Things start like screaming at you and it's really really hard when you're living a life for christ or trying to live a life for christ but the people in your environment or your surroundings is not on the same page so it's really hard um or a challenge because it's like you're not god so at the end of the day you can't sit up here and start picking at people and their issues just because now you know better so it's really really challenging to Shut your mouth at times and just let people, you know, do them and give them to God. It's really, really challenging to surrender. Surrendering is really challenging, especially surrendering the things that you want and love, people that you want and love. That is really, really challenging because that's one of the biggest things on a walk with Christ is you have to fully surrender. You have to surrender your whole being to him, yield to, you know, his will for your life and the things that he has called you to do and be. And so that is definitely one of the most challenging things with this as well as, you know, fighting temptation. It, it gets better, but depending on your situation, depending on if you're in environments where you're like you can't really control the temptations then i know that, that can be very very challenging also i feel like once you set it in your mind that you know you're walking this thing out with god and you're really not trying to look back on the old life being of this world that's when the enemy attacks you harder so i know people can think that just because you may take on this walk with god or whatever and want to get serious in your walk you think that, oh, now life is about to be easy for me and I'm not about to have any problems or anything like that. But honestly, child, that is when the devil comes at you harder because he wants you to switch sides. But no. Nah. And he, the devil is really gonna send you the things that you want real quick. That's something that I feel like is um, a bit challenging on this walk as well. Having to decipher and make sure that you have that discernment knowing is God answering my prayer or is this the enemy trying to set me up for failure? You know, the enemy gonna come after you. So every which way, every which way. What, who inspired you to begin your journey with Christ? So I've already kind of answered what, so I'll say as far as who, and I don't really have a who, honestly, I've always, I feel like I don't want to make anybody upset as far as, you know, like my parents or anything, they see this or family members, but from what I can remember, now I know that, you know, you know we would go to church sometimes, but it was never a situation where biblical principles were just sternly instilled in me. Of course, my household believes in God, but it wasn't a situation where you know how you have some parents where they're really, really strict and really stern about this type of stuff. That wasn't the situation with me. Honestly, I feel like from what I can remember, I've always kind of just took this kind of serious on my own. Like I said, I got um, baptized in fifth grade. That was my own decision. And then in high school, I ended up finding like my own new church home from my family church. I actually ended up getting my mom to come and join the church with me, which, you know, I don't go there anymore or whatever. But yeah, like this, this journey has kind of always just been off my own wheel. So nobody really, I've always known my father. I may have not always did right by him or did my best with upholding his um, commands but I've always known him, so I would have to say myself, <laughs> me. 
how do you do your fast and how long i want to get into fasting just don't know where to start so if i do different fasts i know i've answered a previous question about fasting but with this right here as far as how long it depends on the fast so there's different types of fasts there's water fast there's intimate fasting there is all types of fasts okay honestly and i feel like fasting is kind of like a personal thing to be honest with you and god so whatever you feel like god may be leading you to do or whatever you feel like you know you want to do as far as fasting to get closer to god um get in his presence get answers or whatever i feel like that's just kind of a personal decision hey sis are there any devotional apps books etc you recommend so um as far as devotional apps i don't really know any devotional apps i have a daily devotional journal um it's like a 52 week i have it linked on my amazon storefront but i haven't used it in a while and i also have like the matching daily devotional all of those are linked on my storefront but i don't know any apps as far as books though i have a lot of books that i want to get like listed um in my notes books that i have right now though i forgot the name of it i have a crazy faith and relationship goals the other book that i just got is like the answer to anxiety by i forgot her name but i'll put it on the screen or i'll link it on my amazon storefront check out my amazon storefront for good reads how to distract my mind from negativity and take a major turn and never look back at negative it's a lot i can say but i need help praying and gaining faith okay so first part how to distract my mind from negativity and take a major turn and never look back at negative girl we all in this together can't stop i can't stop no i can't stop and i will stop because there's power in the tongue there's power in the tongue you don't say that but we're holding this together okay as far as that child but i feel like that definitely comes with healing i think that thinking negative all the time has something to do with some type of underlying trauma something that you're not healed from that is causing your your brain to do that so I would probably look into some type of self-work journals, books, healing books and journals. That's what I plan on doing. And then once you heal from whatever it is that has you, you have to figure out what has you always thinking negative. And once you heal from that, I feel like that's gonna help you to never turn back. But I don't really know the exact and correct answer. That's the best that I can say because that's something that I personally still struggle with from time to time. And of course, you can always pray. That's that's what I do. It's a lot I can say, but I need help praying and gaining faith. Speaking of prayer, the asking jump started my prayer to how I pray. Because y'all, I used to just do the little prayer at nighttime, you know. Father, lay me down to sleep. I pray to the Lord, my soul to keep. Father, protect my family, protect us, you know. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen. Quick one, two, one, two every night. And that was it. Baby, when I started that fast, <laughs> every night, this may help. This is what did it for me. And in moments where I feel like I don't feel like praying, but I'm gonna do it anyway, um, because I know I have to. You have to be consistent in your prayer. I turn on a song. Whatever song you feel is my your favorite worship song like a slow steady song whatever song you feel like really really gets you in his presence play that in the background and just just start talking to him like you're having a conversation you know just tell him what you're feeling if you're hurting whatever just talk to him like a father and i'm telling you that is what i feel like help when i tell y'all if y'all watched the other vlog when i was like in january i was fighting for my life I was fighting for my life <laughs> and I was fighting in prayer, okay? Just go to him and get down on your knees, lay out on the floor, do whatever you cry. I'm talking about talk to Jesus. Don't try to be like anybody else when they pray. I think that's another thing too. Don't be like, you know what? I only wish I could pray like this or I wish I could, you know. No, just take it as, you know, this is my time with my father. I'm gonna come to him and I'm gonna ask for it. If I wanna ask for something, but hey look if this is what you just need your father pour your heart out to him and it'll just get the flowing you got that worship music in the back it'll just get the flowing next thing you know you've been praying for you don't know how long okay in, in tears play that song today and just talk to him 
that's the best advice I can give. Don't try to be like nobody else. Don't think too much about it. Just talk to your daddy, girl, boy, man, whoever's watching. As far as gaining faith, the main thing that I think of is the scriptures and stuff in the Bible where he tells us that if we have the faith the size of a mustard seed, that we have the power and authority to tell a mountain to move. And you know, there's also stories about, I used to know this story like really real back when I like first read it. It was, what type of woman was she? I forgot what type of woman she was, but she was basically a woman that kind of like she was on the other side, basically. But I think her child needed something. And she went to God. And at first he was kind of, you know, he wasn't going because he knew that she wasn't really, you know, rocking with him at first. But that girl kept her faith and she kept on. And God told her that her prayers or whatever it was that she was asking for were granted and it was done because of her faith. So things like that in the Bible, and then you know the faith of the friends who um, let the man down. That was um, what was he sick or something like that? The friends that let the man down in the in the roof to God, and and, and he God healed him because of the faith of his friends. Everything be off of the faith of somebody. So I just remember that as long as you have faith, my faith is my weapon. My faith is what is going to get me through. My faith is it, you know? So it's like, that's what I just re remind myself. Can't nobody take my faith away from me. So if you don't have anything else, have faith. So hopefully, you know, me saying that, read the, read the Bible, girl. It's a lot of scripture stories in the Bible that will show you how powerful faith is. And I feel like holding on to those words is, what will help you keep faith whenever you may be struggling with your faith because we all do fall short sometimes but that's another thing that's in the bible you know there was i can't remember the man but he literally you know had to pray to god and ask him to help him when his faith was weak or whatever and that made me feel really really like i'm not gonna say good i guess you would say good to know like because i didn't know that that even somebody in the bible faith was wavering but he literally prayed for god to help him with his wavering faith so we all fall short sometimes and situations may cause us to wiggle in our faith but stand on a word find you a word and stand on it okay we're getting to the bottom y'all because my back is starting to hurt how do you not let your flesh desires win <laughs> right now like i spoke before honestly you have to yield to the Holy Spirit. Pray. Deny your flesh on a daily basis. Not me, but the crumble cookie. Y'all, I went and picked this up. Sorry. <laughs> I went and picked this up after I left church. And guess what kind I got? Wedding cake. <laughs> Anyways, how to not let your fleshly desires win. Girl. I think that kind of goes back to, like I said, running from it, fleeing from it. Run as fast as you can. <laughs> what helps you stay disciplined during fasting? This is gonna be the last question. And definitely just remembering what I'm fasting for. Most of the time when I'm fasting, I already have set motives as for why I'm fasting. So just remembering that, that's my pusher. When I just remember what I'm fasting for, if I'm fasting for answers, if I'm fasting for a breakthrough, if I'm fasting for clarity, if I'm fasting for confirmation, if I'm fasting for whatever the case may be, like I need that whatever I'm fasting for. So that's what helps me, you know, stay disciplined and just, you know, I feel like it's just kind of important to keep my word to myself when it comes to saying that I'm a fast. And I also just feel like when I say I'm a fast, I'm kind of coming into agreement of something with God as well. So some people probably don't look at it that, that deep and maybe I shouldn't, but I don't know. I just feel like I would like fail him or, you know, I'm kind of like not keeping my promise to him if I say that I'm doing this fast and then I don't follow through with it. But of course, don't take it the wrong way. Remember that God does give us grace and mercy. Um, but that's just, you know, what kind of helps 
me. That was all y'all. Hope that these gave y'all more insight to my journey and also helped y'all with whatever you may have needed help with, with starting this journey or continuing on your journey. And remember y'all, you can always DM me if you have anything in particular. I get DMs sometimes of the girls, you know, just coming to me and asking me for particular advice so if you did answer and ask a question and i didn't get to it or i didn't answer your specific question because it probably was you know kind of close to a different question that i had already answered feel free to just dm me i always am open to talking and chatting with y'all and giving the best advice that i can from what i do know if i know something and I have some wisdom on it. I have absolutely no problem with sharing and helping. I was gonna say, <laughs> Brax, you wanna tell them goodnight? Brax went to sleep on us, y'all. All right, y'all, so that was all for this video. I hope that y'all enjoyed it. If y'all have any primers, concealers, concealers, you know that you may want to recommend for your girl. Remember, I have sensitive skin, so I'll be allergic to everything, so, you know any of my other sensitive skin girlies out there want to help a girl out then yeah put me on put me on because i get tired of being in the stores reading ingredients for five hours okay <laughs> please help me i'll be trying out here but i think i have the routine down i love how my makeup turned out today so i mean maybe answering questions about god helped me a little bit <laughs> I love it. That was all for this video. I definitely hope that y'all enjoyed it. I know it's been a while since we didn't sat down and, you know, chatted, but I miss talking to y'all. So yeah, I'll see y'all in the next one. You know, it'll probably be a vlog, but <laughs> hey, hey, <laughs> I enjoyed talking to y'all today. If you're new here, oh, yeah, I didn't say that in the beginning. If you were new here, girl, go ahead and click that subscribe button. We almost at 100K. We almost at 100K. It's been a long time coming. I mean, you know, I'm skipping over a couple, but we almost at 100K. We're going to be there. We're going to be there by the end of this year. I'm putting it out there. So go ahead. Join the community. Join the fam. We would love to have you.